Hello everybody, my name is Peter Barnes. I am a wedding photographer based out of Nebraska and I run a wedding photography studio called Intrepid Visuals Wedding Photography. One of the most important parts of my business is my editing workflow. It's so important to have a fast editing workflow. And today I'm really excited because I'm going to show you me editing an engagement session from start to finish and I'm going to tell you all the tips and tricks that I use along the way. With everything that I'm going to show you, I'm able to edit an engagement session in under 30 minutes, which is insane. So if you are struggling with your editing times, if you're finding it's taking you hours and hours to finish through one session, I really want you to watch this video all the way through and maybe you'll be able to learn something that'll help you speed up your editing time. Let's get right into it. Okay, so the first thing I need to start in is actually Photo Mechanic. Now, I use Photo Mechanic to cull down all of the shots that I take at an engagement session down to what I actually want to deliver to the couple. And I use Photo Mechanic just because it's so fast. And you're going to see that here in real time. I actually haven't culled this session yet. There are about 900 photos from this session. And you're going to see me just go through and call these. Now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go very quickly. I'm gonna speed up this footage because I don't want this to take forever, but I do want to explain kind of how I call and what I'm looking for. So let's get into it. So in Photo Mechanic, I press spacebar on this panel once I've ingested everything and it makes it basically full screen. And what I'm able to do is use my up and down arrows to go to the next and previous image. What I'm also able to do if I press any of the one, two, three, four, five buttons on my keyboard, that is going to assign a star rating to the image. Now, every time I do that, watch this, if I hit five, it jumps to the next image automatically. And those little clicks that you save end up adding over the long run. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through and call this entire session, and I'm going to speed up all this footage, obviously, so we're not just sitting here watching me call all day. Okay, so now I've called the entire session down from about 900 photos to 92, which is pretty average for most of my engagement sessions, and that only took me about 10 minutes. Now, I went very, very quickly. I definitely know that I probably selected some images that I'm probably gonna end up getting rid of, but I'll do that in Lightroom while I'm editing. So now that I have all the images in front of me in Photo Mechanic, I'm just gonna grab one of them, go to the first, and I already have a folder system for this, um, for this session made. I'm not gonna go through my folder system right now. I'll do that in another video, but I'm gonna put these into my cold folder under the shoot folder. Now I'm done with Photo Mechanic, so I'm just gonna quit Photo Mechanic. Now what I'm gonna do is make a Lightroom catalog just for this session. So we're gonna go create new catalog. This is for Holly and Nick, so I'm gonna do that. Again, it's gonna go into this folder. These are all the raw files that I just pulled in from Photo Mechanic. We're gonna hit create. Now the catalog's open, it's totally empty, it's how I want it. I'm gonna go to import. Now I'm gonna go navigate to that folder, Holly and Nick, hit that. And then these are again, all of the selected images. So let Lightroom kinda, kinda figure itself out here. And now I'm gonna hit import. Okay, so now all of the images are loaded up into Lightroom. We're in the library module. Now I don't really do a whole lot in the library module here. So I'm just gonna go right to develop and start doing this. So. The first point you need to know is this. It's very, very important that you have a set of presets that you know like the back of your hand. Um, presets, whether or not you buy them or make your own, I highly recommend doing the work and making your own. You need to know how they work and you need to be able to know how to tweak them Otherwise, you're gonna spend far too much time tweaking every single image. I have spent almost my entire career finessing my presets to do exactly what I want to a point where I almost never have to tweak anything, right? Okay, my presets are all over here. Call them tiny box for basically no reason. 
Um, OK, so looking at this image, um, the first thing is it's a little too cool. Um, I've noticed that the Fuji auto white balance tends to bias a bit more towards cool tones. So the first thing I'm going to do is fix that. So I'm going to go over to white balance, probably go to like here. I like this. I'll round that up. I like to round up my white balance numbers. I, I don't know why. I just do that. And then the tint is just a bit too strong here. So I'm going to go down to like 79. Okay. So now the white balance is in a place where I like it. Now I'm going to apply my preset. Now I have a preset called Natural Kava, which does a really good job of kind of retaining the natural colors of the session. And here we go. So I love this. Now, now that I see it, it's a little too bright. So I'm going to expose down. Now I'm using my plus and minus keys on my keyboard. The way you have to do that to enable that is click whatever setting you want to adjust. So if I want to adjust like my vibrance, I click it and now I'm able to modify with plus or minus. I almost always leave this on exposure because that's what I tweak the most. Okay, I like that. It's still just a bit too cool now that I've applied the preset. So I'm gonna push it up even more. And I like this. So I'm gonna go right down to 7,000. And this is the before and after. Okay, I love that. Now, I would call that done. That image is finished. Um, and if you look down at the film strip, what you'll notice is that I tend to shoot my images in sets. So I stay in one location for a good period of time and then I move, which means I'm in pretty much the same lighting conditions for a lot of these photos. So this is when the speed part comes into it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the film strip down here. I'll make this a little bigger so you can kind of see it better. I'm going to look down here and I'm just going to look for when we moved to a different lighting situation, which was right about here. So I'm going to select all of these images. Okay, watch this. Ready? I'm going to go to sync and I'm going to select everything except for um, crop because I might have to crop on an image by image basis. I'm going to hit synchronize and it's going to copy all the settings that I just made on this first image to every image that I selected. Now, what I'm also going to do, this is kind of where the magic comes in. If you go up to settings and go to match total exposures, what it's going to do, whatever image you have currently selected, which in this case is still the first one, Match total exposures will analyze all of these images and give you an exposure that is equivalent to what this image is. So what that means in real English is it's going to make all of these images look super cohesive. So we're going to go to settings, match total exposures. It's going to do its thing. And now if you look down here at the film strip, you see how it made them all brighter. And it did that to try to match the exposure level of this one. Now it's not just copying this um, negative point one over here, it's actually analyzing the image in relation to this one and giving it a proper exposure value. Now it's not perfect, I am still gonna tweak this, but this gets you really close. So at this point what I do is I look and I'm going to just adjust the exposure from there until I like what I have. So that's cool, I like that, I love it. I am going to mix it up every now and again and throw in a black and white, like this one for example. I'm gonna black and white this. I have a black and white preset. Boom, done, come on, boom. There it is, done, that's done, love it. Keep going, keep going, keep going. I don't really like this image a whole ton, so I'm just going to get rid of it. And see, that's what I meant. I'm calling so fast that I sometimes bring in images that I don't end up liking, and I'll just delete them in the catalog. But what I don't wanna do is spend so much time in photo mechanic really thinking about every image. I just want to get done with calling, right? This one's a bit too bright, so I'm just going to bring that down just a touch. And you notice how I'm not really, I'm not really tweaking anything. I'm just using the preset because I've used these presets so much that I've been able to make the tweaks that I would make basically and to make these presets work for basically any kind of image. I'm going to delete this one, don't really like it. Now these ones all went a little too bright, which is okay. I'm just gonna expose these down a little bit. Beautiful. Okay, so 
now we're at kind of the next um, look. Now we're actually still in the same spot, but I'm shooting further away, so the lighting is gonna look a little bit different. Now it's gonna be pretty similar to the look before, so what I'm actually gonna do is go to the image right before that one, hit Command C, and I'm gonna copy all these images. This is different from synchronize. It's not actually applying it. It's just adding it to my clipboard. So now I can hit OK. Go to this image, Command V, and it's gonna paste all of those settings onto the image. Now this actually was really close. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. I don't have to tweak anything. Select all these images. You can see, you see right here, we go to a totally different location. So I'm gonna have to re-edit there. But these images are all gonna be great. So I'm gonna sync. Perfect, and then again, settings, match total exposures. And again, it's gonna get really close, so cool. Perfect, expose down, beautiful. Okay, now we are at the next location. Now, I have a different preset. So I have the natural Kava preset, but I have another preset that I'm gonna show you that's super cool for situations like this where there's a lot of orange but not a whole lot of green. So first, same deal, I'm gonna white balance really quick. So I'm gonna start at around, let's see, maybe around 7200. And then again, just a little too much tint, so I'm gonna go back to about 78. Perfect. So this preset is called Soft Cocoa. This one is kind of the polar opposite of natural kava. It changes a lot of the colors and it makes everything feel very fall, fall-y, autumn, autumnal, if you will. Okay, soft co cocoa, amazing. Now, few problems. Skin tone's kinda whack on this to start. So what we have to do is we have to just go even further with the white balance and then come back with the tint. That's a little too much, let's go to like 72. It's getting there. I still kinda want to tweak those skin tones a touch. Let's go to like 8400. Expose up just a little bit. And this is kinda, I basically do this just for one image and I know it's gonna be really, really close for the next one. Beautiful, oh, where's my mouse? Okay, there we go, let's go to 70. What I'm looking at is there, there were just some weird kind of pinkish tones over here, but I like this a lot now. Okay, so again, what this does is it really kind of pulls your greens out and kind of brings all the fall vibes together. So again, same deal. I'm gonna grab all these images, except for this one, because we go to a new spot and hit sync. Okay, so now I've synced all the images with uh, that one preset, and again, I did match total exposure, so I'm just gonna go through and again, just make the tweaks that I wanna make. And again, I want you to notice, I'm not spending a lot of time on this. And that's why it's so important to have presets that work for you, because it would be so detrimental to my workflow if I had to spend 20 minutes on every single image, making sure it was perfect. It really is a combination of two things. Um, the first one is obviously, like I said, having good, presets and again not necessarily ones that you buy but ones that you make right but also you need to release some of your perfectionism and i think it's really easy as photographers to dread over every single image and try to make it perfect you have to stop doing that you cannot spend 20 minutes on every image trying to get the crop and the the spot removal and the exposure perfect because what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up over editing your shots and you're gonna wanna redo it anyway. And then you're gonna dread if you ever get requests from your client for a re-edit, because that happens sometimes. So guys, just go quick, trust your instincts, and just go for it. And basically, I use this preset when the greens aren't really bringing anything to the image. And in fact, a lot of the times the greens can be detrimental, especially once I've white balanced to a point where their skin looks good, the greens can get they can start to look yellow anyway, so I'll just use this preset to kind of take that down. Now we're at their last location. Beautiful. And again, I'm gonna start over. For this kind of vibe too, I'm definitely gonna use the soft cocoa preset because there are basically no greens, so I want everything to have that warm tone around it. So I'm gonna hit it. Now again, this preset looks awful when you apply it to start because like they're basically dead. So I'm just gonna really pull up the white balance to about Woof, uh, 15,000, I do not care. I don't care what the number says, we go to 70, 
Beautiful. Love it. Actually, it's a little too much. Let's go like 13,000. Let's go to like 67. And again, all these numbers I'm saying with the white balance, it's just by feel. It's something you can only really get good at with practice. All right, dig this. And again, we're gonna go to the end of this set, which is also the end of their session, and sync. And then again, you know the drill, match total exposures. Boom. All right, let's go through it. Whoa! Super bright here. Okay, so this is an example of when match total exposures kinda doesn't work. I intentionally really underexposed this because I wanted to bring out a bit more moodiness in the sky. So I'm going to intentionally let this one fall um, with a little more darkness on their faces because that's what I intended to do when I shot it. And for this one, I'm definitely gonna go black and white. It was a pretty dreary day too. When it got to that sunset, it was pretty cloudy and I kind of want to retain that look. And generally, you know, match total exposures through this whole set, it did a really good job and it just saves a ton of time. Okay, and that's the last ring shot. Okay, guys, that's it. The session's done. So what I'll do at this point, once I finish the edit, is I'll go back into library and I'll just start at the end, look at that image and go up to the beginning and just see if there's anything I don't like. And I am totally cool with all this, so. Actually, you know what? I'm not, you know, it's, it's a little too pink. It's a little too pink, just a touch. I'm gonna go to 76. Beautiful, okay. Now because I made that adjustment on tint, I'm gonna go apply that to every image here. So right to here. And I'm gonna hit sync, but I'm gonna check nothing except for the white balance, basically. Um, we're gonna do that, synchronize. And now, it's just going to adjust the tint to kind of compensate for what I wasn't liking before. Okay, let's go back to library. Give everything one more look, there we go. I'm much more into that, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, sweet. Now guys, at this point I would go through, I would pick a few sneak peeks that I send to the couple and then I would leave the rest of the export till later. The reason I do that is because um, you know, obviously the edit was very quick. Sometimes I make mistakes, you know? Sometimes we do stuff that's dumb. So what I do is I do the sneak peeks, I give them to the couple the next day, but I'll give myself a few days and then come back to the session and I'll look at it again. After my eyes have had some time to kind of look at other things, if you will, uh, sometimes I realize and I look at these images and I'll be like, what the hell did I do? What was I thinking? And I'll re-edit it and then send to the couple. But again, because of how powerful these presets are, um, I generally don't have to do that. So at this point, I would just export and then I'm good to go. And you guys, that is everything with my editing workflow. Thank you so much for watching. I know it was a bit of a longer one, but I truly hoped that you learned something and took away something valuable. If you want the presets that I used to edit these images, the link is in the description. They are 100% free to use and do with whatever you would like. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.